Hi folks, this is a predictions video for the Leaving Cert Ordinary Maths Paper 2 for 2025, what comes up every year. So I'm going to include an overview of topics for the last four years, a list of recurring topics, and then I'm going to put in some links and QR codes there to full solutions of questions from the 2024 paper. So it's how do these topics have come up in the summer just gone. These are the topics. The first one is coordinate geometry. Now it's just the formula here. It's distance, midpoint, slope, an equation of a line. So I've included them all in the one, but they're all reading off the formula from the log tables and just identifying what's x1, y1, x2, y2, and then subbing them into the formula. Those are fairly repetitive, but we need to have practice putting them into the formula. The second one is the circle center and radius. Identifying the center and the radius when you're given the equation of a circle and being able to fill them into the equation of a circle as well. Third one is empirical rule. That's uh, where you're given the normal distribution and you have to know the that the mean is in the middle and then it goes out a standard deviation each time. And you have to know the three percentages as well, the 68%, 95%. And 99.7% knowing where they are on that uh, diagram basically for the normal distribution but I'll show you that later the confidence interval so that's including margin of error margin of error is quite simple it's just 1 over root n and often one of the parts of the question will just be figuring out what that is then for 5, 6, 7 and 8 there they're all trigonometry Pythagoras and Sokotoa they're to do with right angle triangles and then sine rule and cosine rule is uh, non-right angle triangles. And it's just knowing which of those to use when and be able to at least start questions on those. So I think trigonometry is a, is a big part of this paper. Uh, question 9 is expected value. And then the last one is volume and surface area. So there's a few formulae there again from the log tables. And a lot of the time it's just filling in the formula and there's a little bit more problem solving i suppose in those and just being able to manipulate around the formula and fill in and figure out what what you need from it so the first one anyway this was the way coordinate geometry came up last year now i've put down distance midpoint slope an equation of a line formula for this question you needed to use the slope formula and you needed to use the equation of a line formula so I don't think distance or midpoint came up in the paper but you see here I was able to identify x1, y1 and x2, y2 and fill them into the slope formula that's just putting in the, num in the numbers then you have what m is and you can put that in then into the equation of a line formula and you use the x1, y1 again and that was all there really Now, uh, this is a spreadsheet of the places that the questions came up in the last few years. If you look there, that's question one, 2024. That's what came up in, in that. And question two and so on. It's a rough kind of guide as to what the topics were in each question. And if we look for coordinate geometry here, so distance and midpoint and all of that. You'll see it there in question 3 for 2024. It was part C of the question. Now part B there was slope on a graph. That's important actually as well. To be on a graph it's just going to be the rise over the run and understanding that when it's going up from left to right it's positive. When it's going down it's negative. And the first part of that question was showing that a point is on a line. That's just where you're summing the point in for the x and the y and just seeing if it, if it works out if, if the equation works out that was all of the question there in 2023 sorry in 2024 2023 you'll see slope of two points came up distance of two points again there are the two formula equation of a line came up again and then slope on a graph actually came up again in 2023 that was question one 2022 it came up in paper one or in then Question one again, slope came up, distance between two points came up, equation of a horizontal line that's slightly different, 
and then in 2021 equation of a line come up again equation of a perpendicular line to it that's where the, the slope changes it flips around and the sign changes that's how you get slope of a perpendicular line but again equation of a line comes up so just a no on the formula equation of a line come up there in question 10 that year as well and it does come up in part our section b some of the times those formulae as well but it is a guaranteed question in section a of paper two next one is the circle this that's the equation of a circle there the x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared we have to know that hk is the center and the radius then we'll have to do square root of whatever is on the that side of the equal sign and it's just being comfortable with the equation of a circle formula and being, able, and being able to fill it in that's the way it came up last year was question 4a if we look back at the other years then in 2023 uh, it came up there in question 2a so it's it's really it's the first bit of the circle topic there it came up again in uh, 2a in 2022 and in 2021 the equation of a circle is there in part a again in question four therefore we can see it's coming up every year the empirical rule this is quite this is simple enough kind of an idea the mean is always in the middle in this one here they give us that 7.2 and 8.4 there's 68 percent of values in between those two and that is always one standard deviation away the 68 percent percent is one standard deviation away therefore we know that the median has to be exactly in the middle of 7.2 and 8.4 which is 7.8 and then we know that the standard deviation is 0 0.6 and we just have to go back 0 0.6 to get to the box out here and we have to go forward 0 0.6 from 8.4 to get the 9 out here we just we need to know that the the numbers on the bottom they always jump by a standard deviation each time and then the three percentages are 68 percent then in between the 9 and the 66 6.6 .6 here would be 95 percent of the values and then if we were to go another standard deviation again from there it would be 6 and 9.6 would be out here and out here that's 99.7 so we need to know 68 percent 95 percent and 99.7 percent are the three percentages that are going to be asked in these questions and then we need to know that the median is in the middle always and it jumps by a standard deviation out each time on the bottom it's fairly easy to see when this comes up as well because that sort of a diagram will always come up that's the normal distribution diagram that's empirical rule there was one year here it didn't come up i think it came up there question 5a last year i don't think it came up there before it came up then in question 4b in 2022 and it came up in question 5a in 2021 and I think it came up back in 2020 as well yes yeah, so it came up in part b there of question 3 in 2020 so it's very it's a very common question again this is confidence interval i mentioned at the start there so including margin of error in here they ask us for the margin of error i've got it circled in red there and margin of error is just one over root n where n is the number of people that are sampled that are in the sample therefore we just do one over root 355 there and that's 0 0.53 or 5.3 percent therefore that's a very easy mark to get uh yeah we have to just show that it's in the percentage there they, they tell us to show that it is that so 
it's easy to see that you, you got the you got the question right. The next bit then is the p hat, or that's just the the, the proportion. Therefore, here it's ninety six out of three hundred and fifty five because ninety six of the three hundred and fifty five runners tells us at the start of the question finished the run, and that's all it is. And we have to calculate it as a percentage here, so we just multiply by hundred. The actual confidence interval then is the p hat plus or minus the margin of error. So if we know how to get the p hat and we need to know how to get the margin of error, the rest of it is very simple. We just take one away. We just take them away from each other and then add them add the two of them together and it gives us both of our parts of our confidence interval and then it's just trying to interpret it from there 24% uh, lies within the confidence interval they they, they wanted to test the 24% here and that's confidence interval and that was in question 7 there in 2024 margin of error confidence interval Then in question nine in twenty twenty three, margin of error there and proportion as well. Then in question ten the year before, in twenty twenty two with margin of error and confidence interval. And in question seven there in 2021. So quite simple again, it's just remembering those things, little formulae, and it's coming up every year. Right, the next four here are the trigonometry ones. So this is Pythagoras. This is the question for Pythagoras last year. Again, we're just squaring the sides here of the right angle triangle and adding or subtracting and then square root and here it mentions the theorem of Pythagoras in the question. It's telling us that we use Pythagoras here. But we need to know that if it's a right angle triangle and we're just dealing with sides here, so side side and side, we have two sides and we're trying to figure out a third side, it's going to be Pythagoras. This was the Sokotoa question last year. The There's an angle mentioned here. When we have an angle being mentioned, we know we have to use Sokotoa. Therefore... Uh, here we're using tan, it's opposite and adjacent. Even getting the first bit there, being able to see if it's sin, cos, and tan, we should, we're getting some marks. This was sine rule then. When we don't have a right angle triangle, we might be using sine rule. It'll either be sine rule or cosine rule. Actually, this was interesting. In the second part here, it, it tells us that to use the cosine rule. Therefore, because it doesn't say anything like that in the first part, it's a good clue that we're going to be using sine rule for the first part. And cosine rule for the second part. When you have a question with triangles in it, it's always it has to be one of those four things that I mentioned for trigonometry. You're always taking a side here, put it over sine of the angle across from it or opposite it, and let that be equal to another side over sine of the angle opposite that. And we we're figuring out what the angle is in this one. And then this was the cosine rule, that's the second part of that question. We're using those triangles again. And the cosine rule is that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And it's in the log tables there. If we look at here then for where did trigonometry come up. And it's there. It's question 8 in 2024 there. Pythagoras, Sokotoa, sine rule, cosine rule. Area of a triangle actually is another little formula. It's in the log tables on the trigonometry page as well. Then Pythagoras came up there in question 8 the year before. Pythagoras came up there as well in D the same year. Then in question seven, uh, Sokotoa and sine rule and cosine rule come up as well. That was 2023, then 2022. Pythagoras was part B there of question five. 
So Katoa was in question 8 in part D. Then you've got cosine rule there as part E of question 9. So Katoa, sine rule were question 9 in 2021. Then I don't see any of the others there. Usually Pythagoras will come up somewhere in some shape or form. Yeah, you've got sine rule there in question nine. Question eight, you've got cosine rule. So generally the four of them will come up in some shape or form on the papers. Right, next one then is expected value. This is a simple enough little question. All we do here is we just take the value here with 150 and we multiply by the percentage and then we add on the next one. So 200 multiplied by 45% and then 40, 450 multiplied by 25% and we, and we just add the three things together and that gives us our expected value. Their expected value is in bold, therefore we, we know that's what we have to do. It might not be for that many marks this question, but it's reliable enough to come up, I think. There it was part C of question 9 last year in 2024. It was part D of question 10 the year before that. In 2023, in 2022 then, it was part D of question 10 again. So generally in the section B of the paper. And then I don't see it in question, or in 2021. The, this is the last one really then this is volume and surface area and I've included them all in the one again cylinder, sphere, cuboid there's a few formula like those in the log tables and it's just being able to fill in uh, what we need here part B of that question this was 2024 they're looking for the surface area of and it's obviously a sphere because it's a tennis ball Therefore, we're using 4 pi r squared, and r is the 3.27, it's the radius of the tennis ball. And it's just filling in the formula there for that. Then part c is a little bit harder. We're doing the volume of the whole thing, take away the volume of this middle part. And we just, it's basically filling the formula in twice with two different radius. And it, they, they, got, they give them to you there nicely in the question. It says r1 is... 3.4 and r2 is 3.1 and we just fill in the formula twice for those into the volume now this time of a sphere 4 over 3 pi r cubed and then we take one away from the other and we, we get 39.85 this was the part d of the question then it brings in a cylinder into it we can see clearly there it's a cylinder the height we have to figure out what the height is here because we know what the radius is, we can just multiply the radius by 6 because it's like you have 6 radii there up the middle of the cylinder and that gives us what the height is. And the radius will just be the same as the radius of one of the tennis balls. And it's using that again there. So if you want to click into that, click into any of those short uh, QR codes there and it, it goes through the question in a bit more detail. That's all the topics I'm going to go through here. There's a few other ones as well. If you want to pause and through that little spreadsheet there yourself, feel free. There's a few other. Probability is another part of that paper that is big enough too, but I didn't put in any questions on it. I, I find there's a often a big variance in how the, those questions come up. Some people like probability. I don't really like it that much, but again, it's probably a big enough part there's going to be definitely be questions on it in the paper i just didn't include any here because i had to limit it down somehow and a few other correlation coefficient 
comes up a bit there and scatter graphs a good bit as well and there's other there's other ones there as well um, constructions will always there'll always be a question on that constructing something maybe a perpendicular bisector you'll see there or um bisecting a line things like that i generally teach that towards the end of the year it's nice if you like that if you like doing constructions using a compass and all that there can be some easy marks going for it but some people don't like them right that's it then again look there's no guarantees of any of these things that but but with all likelihood you're going to see a question on almost all of those things there particularly uh, the trigonometry and I suppose the volume surface area and then I suppose for, for number one there the coordinate geometry they'll always be a question almost all by themselves where the full question is that topic and in my opinion these are the, the topics I'd be getting to grips with first there's easy marks going for a lot of these topics there's a lot of those things that i've gone through there that are quite straightforward it's just putting into putting something into a formula or picking things out of a formula maybe or manipulating something around i would try and get get to grips with, with these topics do a good bit of practice on these ones first and then when you've got these ones done try and branch out a little bit more then and just go through all just go through all your exam papers then just question by question and just do out all the questions in your exam paper and that's the best way in my opinion to revise for the exam just figure out the different ways for all of the topics that they can ask them they'll always change them around a little bit or maybe write them differently or put in a few extra sentences into the start of the question just to try and confuse you a little bit but a lot of the time it's just following the same processes. So that's it. That's all for this video.